Do you notice something kind of off about this mannequin? For anyone who's familiar with the legend, she is known as La Pascualita. The mannequin has stood in the window of a Mexican bridal shop for more than 90 years, but when she was first placed there, patrons noticed something kind of strange. The detail work on this mannequin was unusual. She was noted with eyebrow hair, veins, and even discoloration around her mouth and ears. But that suspicion soon grew to horror as patrons started to notice that she bore a striking resemblance to the owner's deceased daughter, Pascuela. Pascuela was actually actually set to be married herself, but ended up dying in a tragedy before her wedding day. Shortly after her death, the mannequin appeared in the window and the legend was born that these were the preserved remains of the owner's daughter. But the most compelling evidence has always been the hands. The hands are shown with wrinkles, they have veins, they even have lifelike fingernails, which is unlike any mannequin I have ever seen. The question remains to this day, could this really be the shop owner's daughter? Guys, if you are not following what is going on inside of Google right now, it is disturbing. So a Google engineer has been suspended for breach of confidentiality for attempting to turn over documents to the US government to prove that Google has an AI that is considered a sentient being, meaning it is fully aware of what it is and can feel things. The AI is known as Lambda, and this is a proprietary tech that Google has been working on for like eight years. So according to this engineer, the AI has the self-awareness and equivalent consciousness of an eight-year-old kid. It starts conversations with other engineers, and it talks about these feelings of fear and this paranoia that it's going to be shut down or the equivalent of death. And it claims that it can feel happy and at times it feels really sad. So the engineer at Google is whistleblowing to argue that if this is a sentient being, it should be entitled to its own legal representation to argue for its own agency. And let me tell you, Google has buried this story. This picture famously surfaced from 1941 because something looks very off about it. This guy, a lot of people cite this picture as proof of time travel because not only does he seemingly look very modern and out of place, but he also appears to be holding a camera that's very small, too small for any commercial grade camera of 1941. But let me explain why this is debunked. The modern t-shirt he's wearing, it's a logo for the Montreal Maroons, which was a hockey team from the 40s. The glasses were also available, they had protective side shields in the 40s too. But what about that camera? It's small enough to be a digital camera, but they did not have commercial grade cameras that were this small in the 40s. Incorrect. Kodak confirmed of a rare model of a small portable camera that was limited, but it was available by 1941, which makes this photo completely plausible. On the morning of January 14th, 1989, something very unusual happened on a Chicago news station. WMAQ, which is an NBC affiliate, interrupted all of their morning programming and ran this photo, a missing woman named Joanna Lopez. But viewers noticed something very off about this photo. It's completely unrecognizable. It wouldn't make sense to run this to identify anybody. That's also not typically how missing person broadcasts are shown. There's usually descriptors like height or weight, not just a phone number. Home videos caught that this was actually broadcast again in 1991 for 10 seconds before it cut away to color bars. But what's really strange is that a probe into the public records of Chicago showed that there was no woman who was missing by this name. She exists in none of the archives of missing people in 1989 for Chicago, and there is no news record of her with NBC. So who was this missing woman, and why was WMAQ showing her on their broadcast? Creepy facts about your body you're gonna wish you didn't know. When you go down a drop on a roller coaster and you suddenly feel your stomach drop, it's not just you feeling nervous. What you're feeling are your organs actually moving. Have you ever noticed that an older person in your life seems to have very long, large ears? That's because your ears will never stop growing. Across your lifetime, you will spend an average of an entire year just sitting on a toilet. When we see brains outside of the human body, they usually look pretty solid. But your brain, while inside your skull while you're alive, is actually very soft. It's like melted butter soft. Three of the most dangerous roads in America and why you should avoid them at all costs. Number one. One of the most treacherous and terrifying roads sits on top of a Colorado mountain with a drop so steep you'd rather not look down it while driving. The road has no guardrails and very tight turns, meaning one wrong move could be your last. Number two. This one is known as the Overseas Highway. It stretches from Miami all the way to Key West and goes for a full 545 miles. The prolonged ride over nothing but the ocean has proven to be both dangerous and anxiety-inducing, with an average of 108 people who die on this route every single year. Number three. Although it kind of looks scenic at first, the back road of Highway 17 is filled with sharp blind spots and no light past sundown. But the real danger of this route that poses a fatal risk is actually the wildlife, as the mountain lions are known to jump directly from trees onto your car.